Welcome to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. Today is Sunday, March 13th, 2022, and we are live. Hope everybody is doing well today. It's been a very busy weekend and um, had to uh, taught uh, online classes uh, this weekend also. So we have some great sessions. We'll give you uh, some information about that. And we'll, I'll tell you about the new online course that we have starting up next Saturday. Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization, where I'll profile over 100 uh, African women all throughout history. So we'll talk about that as well. Well, on today's show, um, you know, on my Thursday show, we talked about, uh, you know, we're on uh, Monday through Friday here on Antony. I'm Superstation WFDF. So on uh, on Thursday, we talked about Ryan Coogler. And uh, Ryan Coogler, director of Black Panther, back in January of 2022, he went to a branch of Bank of Bank of America in um, Bank in uh, in uh, uh, Buckhead in Atlanta. And he wanted to withdraw uh, $12,000 from his own bank account. Okay. And, uh, the police ended up being called. It was just totally ridiculous what happened. All right. We, we talked about this here on the show Well, we talked about it on Roland Martin unfiltered also. I was on Roland Martin unfiltered on Friday. I'm a panelist usually each Friday. So we talked about that on Friday and I'm going to share, uh, some excerpts with you as well. Good, uh, from what happened on Roland Martin unfiltered also. OK, uh, <laughs> but um, good morning, America. I was doing more research on this story for today's show. Good. Good morning, America has a really, really good segment in the segment from Good Morning America. They actually show some of the bank employees. Now, the the, the employees are African-American, the branch manager, the woman who called uh, the police on on Ryan Coogler. <laughs> They're African-American. And, uh, you know, this really, really could have ended up um, being a terrible situation. Luckily, um, everything was handled to the to Ryan Coogler's satisfaction when Bank of America corporate got involved. But well, I, I'll let you hear what happened with that. OK, um, so we're going to we're going to talk about that. And then also um, Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett. We talked about this on a Thursday show as well. Uh, we know Jesse Smollett was um, sentenced to 150 days uh, in Cook County Jail. He got 30 months probation. The first 150 days he has to serve in Cook County Jail. Uh, so it's obvious, it's obvious that Judge James Lynn uh, had it in for uh, Jesse Smollett, okay? So we talked about this on a Thursday show, but uh, on Roland Martin Unfiltered, we also discussed it there. And Roland actually interviewed two of Jesse's brothers, and they're saying that he's totally innocent, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. You can believe what you want to believe. All right. Uh, I, I've said, we talked about this Friday. I think he did it, but, and I think he's going with the bit, but 150 days is ridiculous. He shouldn't do any time in jail. Okay. He shouldn't do any time in jail. I mean, 150 days is, I mean, you know, I, I said this here on the show, uh, I said this here on the show on Thursday. Um, when you look at Judge Regina Chu, when she sentenced um, Kim Potter in killing Dante Wright, Judge Regina Chu had more sympathy for Kim Potter than um, Judge James Lynn had for uh, Jesse Smollett. So it, it so it's obvious here. It's obvious. It, it, it really seemed. I, I watched everything live. Okay, I watched the sentencing live, and it seems like uh, 
Judge James Lynn had some personal grievances with uh, Jesse Smollett. OK, it seemed really personal. So we'll discuss this here. I'll, I'll let you hear what happened on Roland Martin and filtered also. OK. All right. So uh, then also on today's show, um, I want to deal with we're, we're going to give you an update on what's going on um, in Ukraine. OK, with the attack from Russia. All right. We'll give you an update on what's going on there. But also we're going to look at a different perspective. Now, we talked about the plight of uh, African students. OK, trying to get out students from Nigeria, students from Ghana, different things like this. Right. But something that is talked about much less and I've seen a few segments on this, Charles Blow uh, on the Black News Channel, um, also Tiffany Cross on MSNBC. I've seen a few segments here and there. How does the Russia-Ukraine conflict affect African countries? How does the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict affect African countries? OK, I'm going to share a segment with you that deals with this. There was also... Uh, as I've seen a few articles dealing with this uh, as well. OK, uh, there was a, there was a piece from uh, BBC News that uh, dealt with this also. And uh, I'll share that with you as well. OK, so and one of the things I, I've been looking at some different um, articles and and some different news coverage. And one of the things that comes up is how conflicts in African countries don't get the amount of coverage nearly anywhere near the amount of coverage that uh, this uh, Ukraine Russia conflict is getting. Now, yes, this Ukraine Ukraine Russia Russian conflict can trigger World War Three. That is true because there was bombing that that happened. Um, overnight and it, uh, it it was about 15 miles away from the Ukraine Poland border Poland is part of uh, NATO North American Treaty Organization Poland is part of NATO if that if if one of those bombs from Russia one of those missiles whatever if that goes into Poland territory, Poland is going to respond and all the NATO nations, including the U.S., are duty bound to defend any inch, every inch of NATO territory. That could very well launch World, World War Three. So we, we, we see that um, the, the latest update. One of the latest updates, Russia sought military. Well, not, that's not what I wanted. They just updated this. An airstrike near Ukraine's border with Poland killed 35 and injured 134 others. And Russia is uh, uh, apparently seeking military aid from China as well. OK, so we'll talk some about this. But how does this Russia-Ukraine conflict affect African countries? OK. We'll, so we'll discuss that. And then um, March 10th, 2022 was the uh, 12th year anniversary of me hosting the African History Network show. So this is our anniversary week and weekend and all of that. So um, I, I started out on the uh, Harambe Radio Network, uh, March 10th, 2010. So this past March 10th, uh, this week was uh, is our 12th year anniversary of me hosting the African History Network show. And it's actually six years. Um, April of this year will be six years of me hosting this show on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF. So we're celebrating our, tw our 12th year anniversary also. <laughs> we got some applause. OK, <laughs> so we're hosting our 12th year anniversary uh, as well. OK, now uh, the calling number is 313-778-7600, 313-778-7600 if you have a question or comment. On the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people 
of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now it's correct your own behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow the people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you can control the circumference of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Now, we deal with a number of different topics here on the African History Network show. We deal with current events in history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T. To 22828 to sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K E M E T, to 22828 to sign up for our email newsletter. Also, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, you can register for the online classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Also, you can support the African History Network. So, we definitely need your support. We have six days a week. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through cash app also through paypal.me forward slash the ahn show paypal.me forward slash the ahn show all right so we've been here 12 years and we keep going uh and then uh, also uh on paypal as well and uh, we have the information here on the homepage of our website you can register for my online classes on saturdays is ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade with didn't teach you in school 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Sundays, it's uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement of Black Power, 1865 to 1968. So the classes are discounted on sale, $60 each, regularly $130. We have a bundle pack. You can register for both classes for $100. Uh, we're coming up on a break. You listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. The Business Scaling Challenge is a seven-day online event that is taking place the week of March 13th through March 19th, 2022. This challenge will guide a group of business owners through scaling their businesses. Business owner Ronnie Sumler is hosting the Business Scaling Challenge in remembrance and honor of her father, the late civil rights activist Rodney Sumler. He helped a lot of African-American-owned businesses and local community leaders participate in politics. However, when he passed away, all of his ventures died with him. This inspired his daughter, Ronnie Sumler, to help community business owners preserve their businesses. Her business, Digital Dandelions, offers business Bibles to record business processes and procedures. Their business Bibles are their branded run of show business manuals that have everything you need to run your business in one place. Their business scaling kit is the first step in creating a business Bible. It includes everything needed to grow your business in one place. Join the Business Scaling Challenge Facebook group for more information and good luck in scaling your business. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Sunday, March 13th, 2022, and we are live. Call in numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. All right. Uh, we're going to go to clip number one here in just a second. Jalen dealing with Ryan Coogler. This is from Good Morning America. So uh, we talked about this on Thursday's show, and uh, I, I was on Roland Martin Unfiltered uh, on Friday, and we discussed it as well. We're on early, our sun, our show on Sunday is on earlier than my show during the week, Monday through Friday. I'm on 11 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time, Sundays. Well, on 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. So a lot of people get to hear the show on Sunday that don't get a chance to hear it during the week. Um, New York Times has a has a good article dealing with uh, dealing with this with uh, Ryan Coogler and also Essence magazine as well. Uh, Black Panther director Ryan Coogler mistaken for robber in Atlanta. Um, corporate office for Bank of America said. Uh, we deeply regret that this incident occurred, Bank of America said in a statement. 
about the episode on January 7th, 2022. It never should have happened. And we have apologized to Mr. Kugler. All right. Um, let's go to uh, clip number one, Jalen. Uh, here's what uh, here's what happened. Now, what's interesting, this footage that they have from Good Morning America, they actually show the bank employees and African-American, right? They're wearing a uh, uh, mask, uh, uh, like COVID-19 mask, but they actually show uh, the Bank of America employees. Let's go to this clip. Black Panther director Ryan Coop, handcuffed by police after being mistaken for a robber at an Atlanta bank. This incident was all caught on camera. ABC Steve Olsen tell me, is in Atlanta with more and what the bank is saying. This is a shocking, a bizarre, and really unfortunate incident here, Steve. Good morning to you, TJ. This is the Bank of America branch where this movie director was trying to withdraw cash. Atlanta police this morning would like to underline that they were just responding to a call of a bank robbery and say that there was even a car running and waiting outside these bank doors. Bank of America this morning is saying that what you're seeing in this police body camera video should never have happened. You got weapons on you, buddy? I got that on me, bro. On January 7th, people working at one of their banks on the north end of Atlanta called police, saying that the man seen here in the green sweatshirt being put in handcuffs was trying to rob the bank, which wasn't true at all. You wrong my name. You understand why you should all these stuff. What the bank didn't immediately realize is that this is 35-year-old movie director Ryan Coogler, a very successful and wealthy filmmaker who doesn't need to rob banks. Put up, right? In fact, the first film he directed was Fruitvale Station, which told the true story of a racially charged police encounter in California where a young black man was killed. I got other plans in my life and this wasn't part of it. He directed actors Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone in the boxing movie Creed. <laughs> And in 2018, he broke box office records directing Black Panther for Disney, which remains the most profitable film ever with a black director. It's why he was here in Atlanta in January, filming the sequel to the film. The incident started when he walked into the bank fully masked with a black hat and sunglasses and gave the bank teller a withdrawal slip. On the back of the slip was this note obtained by TMZ saying, I would like to withdraw $12,000 cash from my checking account. Please do the money count somewhere else. I'd like to be discreet. The bank teller and nearly every other person in this incident was also African-American, but she didn't recognize that he was a famous Hollywood director. In the police videos, she tells officers that when she asked questions, he kept quietly pointing her to the note. He just kept pointing, he was like, look at the note. So I'm like, okay. And so I said, do you have your ID? He did give me his ID. It was a California ID. But my stomach started turning. Like, I'm like, okay, this is odd. She also says he gave them his Bank of America account card. But they still called police. I have police in Ralph. Can you see, are you able to see if he's still there? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to really turn the corner. When police came, they explained in their report that they determined this was a, quote, mistake by Bank of America and that Mr. Kugler was never in the wrong. He and the two people he was here with were released. I stated to the officers that arrested me that had, that had their glocks out. Yeah. So I was putting money on my own account. I understand. We have to confirm that because of the seriousness of the call, we don't just come out, and unfortunately, in a situation like that, you don't get the benefit of the doubt. We detain, and then we ask questions later. In a statement, Bank of America says that we deeply regret that this incident occurred. We have apologized to Mr. Kugler. The director tells ABC News that Bank of America worked with me and addressed it to my satisfaction, and we have moved on. Banks often have thresholds for withdrawals that trigger warnings to managers, usually above $10,000. And police believe that that's one of the things that happened here. Guys, one of the things. All right. Uh, and again, it was important to note that he wasn't mistaken for somebody else who was the bank robber. They actually thought he was the bank robber trying to withdraw his own money. So but he says he's okay with it. So yeah, he said that he on. had already resolved this with Bank of America. And he, was, he, was, he was good with it. Huh? All right. Okay. Pause right there. Okay, so that was from Good Morning America. They had they had a good they covered um, that story, so they did a good job with that. Um, so we talked about it on we talked about it on Roller Martin Unfiltered also, 
And uh, <laughs> so I had to I had to edit some of this as well because of Roland's language. But <laughs> uh, we're going to go to that in just a second. Call the numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. So it, it, I, I want to look at this piece here from uh, New York Times. It's, so one of the things that's important to understand is um, – the, the, there are certain checks that you need to do um, when you deal with people's ID and accounts, things like this. Apparently, that didn't happen here. Bank of America has apologized to Director Ryan Coogler after he was assumed to be a bank robber and briefly handcuffed by the police while trying to withdraw money from a from a, a Bank of America branch in Atlanta in January, January 2022. It was uh, in Buckhead, okay, in the Atlanta area. Now, uh, Mr. Cougar, uh, Brian Coogler, best uh, Ryan Coogler, uh, best known for directing Black Panther, handed a teller a withdrawal slip on January 7th, asking for more than ten thousand dollars with a note on the back asking her to be discreet when handing him the cash, according to a police report. Now, uh, Ryan Coogler also had his California state ID as well as his Bank of America card when he approached the teller. Both Ryan Coogler and uh, the teller are African-American. So it was the it appear, apparently the branch manager is as well. The teller, quote unquote, received an alert from Ryan Coogler's uh, account and quickly advised her manager that he was trying to rob the bank branch in the Buckhead section of Atlanta, the report states. OK, now also in the. Uh, article from Essence Magazine, it says that uh, at the time, the woman who is African-American was pregnant as well. OK, so um, it, it, let's go to this clip here from Roland Martin Unfiltered, uh, Jalen. Clip number two. Because she freaked out and frankly, she saw a black man asking for 12 grand and she immediately thought he's a robber. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if the manager's white or black. But that's a dumbass manager as well. Because if I was a manager, I would have said, can you let me see the note? And I probably would have said, hey, fool, it says withdraw out of cash out of my account. Did you put, did he put a PIN number in? Yeah. Did he show his license? Yeah. Did his license match the information on the screen? Yeah. What your dumbass coming to my office for? No, they call a cop and that man could have got shot. She way overreacted. Everybody involved made huge errors that imperiled his life. And I hope he sues Bank of America and gets a significant settlement. Because if you bank at Bank of America, you know they have you put in your debit card and a pin. He provided a driver's license. All she had to do was ask him to remove his sunglasses and open his mask. And she could see that's the same person that correlates to the driver's license that correlates to the information on the screen. And if you notice, what did the 911 dispatcher say? She said, so wait, you didn't verify his information, but she still sent two cops. Why don't she why doesn't she say just go get your manager and verify his information? I don't understand why the dispatcher even sent police officers to respond to this. And beyond that. Why the police officer didn't just say, hey, man, we got a call. Understand you're wearing sunglasses and a mask. It's a pandemic. Just show us that you're the same person on the driver's license. He shouldn't have to do that after he's already followed Bank of America's policies to you know, bring up his account. But going to their guns is just absurd. It, it's absurd. He shouldn't have to be outside explaining himself, particularly when he's as high profile as he is. He did what any person would do wanting to withdraw a substantial sum of money. What I'm trying so, to understand is where does it state in police procedures, Michael, that you get called and when you arrive, you have no, inf there is no information. There is zero information that says that this man is a threat. So why yeah. are you pick this up on the other side of the break? Listen to the African History Network show right here on 9 10 a.m. Superstation, the future of radio. Uh call in numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600. 
7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment and we're celebrating our 12th year anniversary of broadcasting the african history network show as well all right we'll be back in a few minutes the work that i do is larger than the fashion industry it's larger than the art world and i believe that i was born to bring newness into this world i'm kaima mcintyre i'm 24 years old and i'm an artist i create everything from paintings to jewelry design metaphysical jewelry to be specific and fashion design the only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people need Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. What does self-care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature. A chance to create something remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, our handcrafted skincare and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. See for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Sunday, uh, March 13th, 2022, and we are live. Okay, so right before the break, we were talking about um, the story that came out this week about Ryan Coogler. Now, Luckily, uh, uh, an officer like Derek Chauvin did not show up to the scene. Um, and everything has been handled to the satisfaction of uh, Ryan Coogler. He put out a statement uh, regarding this. TMC was the one that broke the story. Uh, this took place January 7th, 2022. All right. Now, we also uh, talked about it. We also talked about it on uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered. And if you could just back that clip up about 30 seconds or so, Jalen, if you haven't already done that. Uh, we talked about this on Roland Martin Unfiltered when I was on on Friday, right? So <laughs> I want to go back to this clip. And when you arrive, you have no, inf there is no information. There is zero information that says that this man is a threat. So why yeah. are you, why when he turns around is the cop behind him pulling his gun out of his holster? Right, yeah, I, I think that's an overreaction there. So I talked about this story last night on the African History Network show, Roland. And, um, you know, luckily uh, a police officer like Derek Chauvin didn't show up. Uh, cause this really could have gone the wrong direction quickly. So there's a couple things here. Number one, uh, if people look at the, uh, article from the New York times on this, um, it, it appears that, uh, Ryan Coogler has an alert on his bank account that gives a, uh, alert notification that somebody tries to withdraw more than $10,000. And what it, what it appears that happened is that when the alert went off, it freaked the teller out. She immediately went to her manager and advised her manager that somebody was trying to rob the bank. But, 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 but wait, 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 wait. Here's the problem. The alert, without, the alert is meant to make sure that if somebody is withdrawing more than 10 grand, you check. Uh, right. I, I'm coming to that, Roland. I'm coming to that. But the problem is, is that she freaked out and she didn't verify his ID with his name on it. 
with the name of the account, and he also gave her, her his debit card. Fire his debit her card. ass. Fire her. You, so it's it's like you know I've I've never managed a bank before. I ran it. I managed a retail management out uh, uh, a retail management store, and there's a process that you have to go through to verify certain things, and you got to go through that process before you call the police. Fire you know, her. I don't <laughs> care if she black. Fire her. If you too dumb, you can't read a note, and then you right. can't check an ID, and you right. can't figure it out, you should not be, if you that scared, take your ass right. and go and work somewhere else in the bank, go on in the back office, you should not mm. be dealing with people and again. But you see the video, the man right. could have been shot. This could have gone a different way, and what people also don't realize, the cops did not just cuff hey, Ryan, they also cuffed his two boys who were outside waiting on him. And I'm saying all that happened, they were all in the police car, and that's foul. I'm, I'm just, it's foul, it's foul, and I'm, and I'm sorry. Her ass need to be fired. I'm glad, I ain't got no Bank of America bank account, but I can guarantee <laughs> you this here, uh, I'm gonna find out what the hell that bank is. I'll be damned if I'm gonna use, get some money out the, uh, out the ATM at that Bank of America. If you, got some, if you got some it's damn, if you got a teller and a manager who's that weak, to call the cops in that situation. <laughs> okay. 313-778-7600 is the call-in number. So, <laughs> um, so yes, he's African-American. Most of the people there at the, at the, at the bank branch were African-American. So, um, once again, you have to check. So he, he had a California license. All right. And you should know, and it's now here's one of the things that people sh should understand. Um, a lot of movies are being filmed in Atlanta now and some TV shows also. So you could very well have people from all over the country coming to Atlanta. And uh, the reason why Ryan Coogler was in Atlanta is because he's filming uh, Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever. When Black Panther filmed, when they filmed Black Panther in 2017 and came out in 2018, um, it pumped about uh, $89 million into the Atlanta economy because um, a lot of the film Black Panther was filmed in Atlanta and it was filmed at Tyler Perry's studios. That Actually, Black Panther was the first uh, movie filmed at Tyler Perry's new studios, okay? And they're filming Black Panther uh, 2 in Atlanta also. So, you know, they should be on alert that, look, it's going to be a lot of people um, who are going to be in town. And they could be from all over the country. They should be on alert for that. Uh, there was an article from uh, which uh, outlet was this? that talked about this because I did a lot of research uh, on the film Black Panther uh, for, for the lectures that I did on it. Okay. And there was a, uh, I'm trying to pull this article up here. They want to play an ad. There was an article from deadline.com that dealt with uh, Black Panther generates $89.3 million for Georgia economy. Okay. Uh, this is from February 7th, 2018. I don't know how many, how many people saw this. If you've been watching the African History Network show, you know, we've been on for 12 years. If you've been watching the African History Network show. You know, we talked about this here on this show because we deal with real substance. Um, this one here, they, they've got this, I guess they're trying to make money. They got this ad that you stays on the screen for 14 seconds before you can go to what it is you want. February 7th, 2018, Black Panther generates $89.3 million for Georgia economy, okay? And most of the movie uh, took place, was, was filmed in um, Atlanta. And they talked about 3,000, if you look at this here, okay? Black Panther continues to do amazing things uh, hold on. Let me see. Black Panther continues to do amazing things during a special screening of the movie 
MPAA chairman and CEO Charles Rifkin highlight, highlighted the contributions of the Marvel Studios production, uh, the contributions the Marvel Studios production of the movie Black Panther made to Georgia as it generated $83.9 million for the state's economy. Okay. So they were mainly in Atlanta because Tyler Perry Studios are in Atlanta. They were filming at his studios. The event was a community screening of the highly anticipated superhero uh, movie for film's local crew, for the film's local crew. Rifkin also pointed out that the film contributed over $26.5 million in wages to more than 3,100 workers across Georgia. The film Black Panther, there's a lot of black people who make, make money from the film Black Panther. I know it was dumbass memes floating around saying black people didn't make no money off of Black Panther. No, you didn't make any money off of Black Panther. That's what it was. How did you position yourself? We found out in 2016 that the movie was coming out. Actually, before then, to go back to about 2014. Those Black people didn't make money off the movie Black Panther. One of them was Tyler Perry. The movie was filmed at his studios. How did you position yourself to make money off the film and you knew it was coming? Emceed by Georgia Attorney General and former commissioner of the Georgia Department of Economic Development, Chris Carr, the event also featured a surprise appearance from Nick Fury himself, Samuel L. Jackson. Okay, so read this. So just the fact that it was like 3,100 workers that benefited from this and in, in Georgia, things like this, and they're filming the movie, you know, in January, they should be on alert at Bank of America and say, look, you know, you can have a lot of people coming in from out of state that have Bank of America bank accounts. So somebody needs some more training. You know, that's all that is. Somebody needs some more training. Um, somebody else that needs more training could be Judge James Lynn. Judge James Lynn, who sentenced uh, Jesse Smollett. So I watched uh, the sentencing, and most legal experts didn't think Jesse Smollett was going to get any uh, jail time. I mean, it's not like he killed somebody. You know, it was dumb. And if we talked about this Thursday. I mean, I think he did it. You know, but still, he shouldn't do any jail time over this. Um, we, I'm going to go to this clip here. Which one is this? Um, this is clip number, let's go to clip number three. Um, Jalen, this is what happened in court on, um, uh, last Thursday. Let's go to this clip. Tonight, more than three years after he allegedly staged a hate crime on himself, Jesse Smollett spending the night behind bars. Judge James Lynn sentencing Smollett to 30 months probation, including 150 days in the Cook County Jail, over $120,000 restitution to the city of Chicago, and a $25,000 fine. I don't think there is anything funny at all about hoaxing and faking racial hate crimes. Earlier in the hearing, the disgraced actor turned convicted felon declined to speak on his own behalf. In 2019, Smollett claimed two masked men hurled racial and homophobic slurs at him, threw chemicals at the Empire Star, and tied a noose around his neck. You're not a victim of a hate crime. You're not a victim of a racial hate crime. You're not a victim of a homophobic hate crime. You're just a charlatan pretending to be a victim of a hate crime. Smollett has repeatedly denied he made it all up after sentencing, still proclaiming he did nothing wrong. I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. The judge telling Smollett he doesn't believe he did it for money, but for attention. I don't think money motivated you at all. But the only thing I can find is that you really craved the attention, and you wanted to get the attention. Smollett was immediately remanded to jail, shouting as he exited the courtroom. I am not suicidal! I am not suicidal, and I am innocent. I could have said that I was guilty a long time ago. Smollett's defense team submitted more than 80 letters defending the actor, including from civil rights leaders. The judge says he considered those letters, but still felt this sentence was necessary. 
All right, we'll pick this up on the other side of the break. Also, this was this was crazy right here, um, because when you know I watched the judge, it took him about forty minutes to sentence him, and um, you can tell he had, you know, it, it was the judge took it was personal for the judge. It seemed like it seemed like it really has something against Jesse Smollett. We'll build this on the other side of the break. Listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. The Business Scaling Challenge is a seven-day online event that is taking place the week of March 13th through March 19th, 2022. This challenge will guide a group of business owners through scaling their businesses. Business owner Ronnie Sumler is hosting the Business Scaling Challenge in remembrance and honor of her father, the late civil rights activist Rodney Sumler. He helped a lot of African-American-owned businesses and local community leaders participate in politics. However, when he passed away, all of his ventures died with him. This inspired his daughter, Ronnie Sumler, to help community business owners preserve their businesses. Her business, Digital Dandelions, offers business Bibles to record business processes and procedures. Their business Bibles are their branded run of show business manuals that have everything you need to run your business in one place. Their business scaling kit is the first step in creating a business Bible. It includes everything needed to grow your business in one place. Join the Business Scaling Challenge Facebook group for more information and good luck in scaling your business iRedify is a black-owned digital platform that showcases black and brown cultures and people. The books on the platform are written by African-American authors, Afro-Caribbean authors, African authors, and so much more. Kids 14 and under can read ebooks, listen to audiobooks, and complete learning activities. Kids can even write in the books digitally. Get unlimited access to everything on the platform for only $8.99 a month at iRedify.com. Sign up for your membership today. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on the Antin M Superstation Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Sunday, March 13th, 2022, and we are live. All right. Be sure to uh, register for the online class. I teach uh, online classes. I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. And uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, uh, 1865 to 1968. And we also have a new class uh, starting up on Saturday uh march 19th 12 noon to 2 p.m eastern standard time and uh, that is a uh, great african women in history the mothers of civilization so uh it's a uh it's two consecutive saturdays it's a total of four hours we'll deal with over 100 african women african-american women in our history from antiquity to uh ancient deities to those in uh civil rights abolitionists scientists uh medicine politicians entertainers the arts um everything okay great uh so we'll have that at africanhistorynetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com i'll post a link here in just a minute but um also on saturdays 2 p.m to 4 p.m eastern standard time i teach ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school and um on sundays from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power 1865 to 1968. So uh, we do with thousands of years of history. We do what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place um, as well. So the class is on sale, uh, $60, regularly $130. And I'm going to update, uh, I'm going to refresh the screen here. The class is on sale, $60, regularly $130. We have a bundle pack where you can register for both classes for a uh, hundred dollars also. So that's at africanhistorynetwork.com. And then a new class, Great African Women in History, The Mothers of Civilization. Uh, you'll be able to register for that uh, there as well. If you've taken any of my classes in the past, uh, email me at um, ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com. You'll get 50% off 
on um, the uh, on the two courses. OK, uh, so we have those uh, uh, those here. All right. I want to go back to uh, the story dealing with Jesse Smollett. So I, I, I talked about this on um, Thursday show because it, it happened Thursday, uh, which was uh, March 10th. And it seemed like, um, is there anything left in that clip? Is there more to that clip that we were playing, uh, Jalen? Okay, we finished the clip. All right. So uh, I'm going to go to clip uh, uh, clip number four here in just a second. If we look at the uh, we look at the article here from uh, NBC News, I think it's the one from NBC News that I want to look at. There was also a good one from uh, Buzz, BuzzFeed News as well. Uh, we'll probably look at the one from BuzzFeed News here. So now, regardless of what you think, whether he did it or whether he was attacked by the Osendawa brothers or whether it was two white guys, two mysterious white guys that haven't been caught that attacked him. Okay. Regardless of what you think, um, getting 150 days in Cook County jail and nobody was hurt. I mean, the only person that was hurt was Jesse Smollett really. After Jesse Smollett sentenced to 150 days in jail, thousands in fines for falsely reporting a hate crime, for falsely reporting a hate crime. This is from the Washington Post from March 10th, 2022. After Jesse Smollett was sentenced to 30 to uh sentenced to 150 days in Cook County Jail for staging and falsely reporting to police that he was the victim of a hate crime in Chicago. The former Empire star, 39 years old, was found guilty on five of six charges of disorderly conduct in December, nearly three years after the incident. Cook County Judge James Lynn, who's a white male, for those that don't know, also sentenced Jesse Smollett to 30 months of felony probation, ordered him to pay $120,106 in restitution to the city of Chicago, as well as a fine of $25,000. Okay. So he did all that. And, uh, and on top of all that, he gave him the first 150 days or the 30 days on probation. He was serving the Cook County jail. Now, while on probation, Judge James Land said Jesse Smollett will be allowed to travel outside of Illinois due to uh, the nature of his job. Smollett, who declined to speak before receiving his sentence, loudly repeated after the fact that he was not suicidal and warned that if anything happens to him in jail, it was not self-inflicted. Let's go to clip number four, uh, Jalen. In the last few Right behind us here in a Cook County courtroom, Jesse Smollett was remanded into custody. He has been sentenced to 30 months probation, which will include 150 days, which he will have to spend behind bars here at the Cook County Jail. He was just taken into custody. He was screaming as he was escorted out of the courtroom, I am not suicidal, and continuing to proclaim his innocence. He will also have to pay over $120,000 in restitution. He faces a $25,000 fine and again he is now going to be spending the night as of now behind bars in the cook county jail we want to show you now what has unfolded over the last several hours here today Our concession. In court today, prosecutors sharing a letter from the city of Chicago and its police department speaking to the damage Smollett has done. A cost that can never be measured. It's a harm caused by reducing the likelihood of actual victims of hate crimes willing to report these crimes. The city also claiming Smollett's hopes cost police more than $130,000 in overtime to chase down a threat that didn't exist. 
Today's sentencing, the latest chapter of a bizarre years-long legal saga. In 2019, Smollett claimed two masked men hurled racial and homophobic slurs at him, threw chemicals at the Empire Star, and tied a noose around his neck. There were doubts the incident was legitimate, but he spoke out about the alleged attack. If I had said it was a Muslim or Mexican or someone black, I feel like the doubters would have supported me a lot. Soon after, Chicago police announced Smollett staged the whole thing with two associates. Why would anyone, especially an African-American man, use a symbol of a noose to make false accusations? His associates, the Osin Dairo brothers, testified against the actor, saying Smollett paid them to attack him outside his Chicago home. Okay, pause it right there. Um, you listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m., the Superstation and Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. We also talked about this on Roland Martin and Filter when I was on on Friday. I'm going to share a segment of that with you as well. 313-778-7600 is the call-in number if you have a question or comment. 313-778-7600 is the call-in number if you have a question or comment. We're also celebrating our 12th year anniversary of me broadcasting the African History Network show. You listen to 9, 10 a.m. Superstation of Future Radio. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. I have to get ready for this next segment. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. Jeanette Davis is a well-established author with six published books. Black Survival in White America from Past History to the Next Century was published in 1995 and it delves into the history of African Americans before slavery up to contemporary times. The Great Divide Between Blacks and Whites was released in 2008 and her autobiography, Black Just Like My Mama, was published in 2010. Soulful Journey, the Business of Beings was released in December 2021 and her two latest books, Echoes from the Heart, Love Throws Poetry, and Master Being Human were both published in January of 2022. Jeanette Davis' writings delve deeply into the psyche of black people from ancient to contemporary times. She cuts no corners and leaves no stones unturned in relating truth, letting the chips fall where they may on both African and European doorsteps. Order Jeanette Davis's books today at Amazon.com. Search for Jeanette Davis and get to know her work today. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Sunday, March 13th, 2022, and we are live. All right, uh, Jalen, let's go back to that clip. We're, we're talking about uh, Jesse Smollett and what happened in court on Thursday, uh, March 10th. All right, and when um, after he was sentenced, he said that he was not suicidal etc let's go back to that clip jalen smollett testified there was no hopes the jury convicted him smollett's defense submitted over 80 letters in support of leniency today his older brother and 92 year old grandmother speaking directly to the judge justice does not have malice or hatred toward anyone and it is truly unfortunate that his reputation has received so many negative connotations i ask you the judge not to send him to prison if you do, send me along with him. 
And Jesse Kirch back with us live from Chicago. Jesse, you mentioned that there was an outburst from Smollett as he was led away. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so I want to read to you his final words as he was escorted out of the courtroom by uh, the justice officials. I am not suicidal. I am not suicidal. And I am innocent. I could have said that I was guilty a long time ago. And this is significant, Gabe, for multiple reasons. First off, earlier in the proceeding, Smollett was asked directly by the judge if he wanted to say anything. Smollett's legal team had said he was not going to make any comments uh, alluding to the possibility of an appeal. And Smollett declined to speak earlier. And also the judge as well as the prosecution, had been pointing out that because Smollett has been convicted, he essentially perjured himself when he testified in court, saying that there was no hoax. And again, Smollett's final words as he was escorted out of the courtroom, convicted and now sentenced to time behind bars, were that he was still innocent. Gabe? And Jeffrey, I'm being told that we now have part of that outburst. Let's play it. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. Yeah. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fear of black Americans in this country for over 400 years, and the fear of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you, and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. All that right there, just moments ago, the breaking news. Has there been any reaction from his family at this point? Uh, we do expect to hear from his defense attorney outside of the courtroom. Now the proceedings are wrapping up, and you could you could tell as we were watching things unfolding there in the courtroom, Gabe, that his defense team was trying to get the judge to allow that jail time to be suspended for the time being. Uh, but Smollett was taken out of the courtroom by uh, those involved with the courts here. So we're going to look for more reaction from his family. But we know that his family, his supporters, have been pleading for leniency, pleading for the judge to not sentence him to any time behind bars, but the judge clearly took that into consideration as well as other factors and came up with, with what he decided was the proper sentence. All right. So that was from uh, NBC News also. So if we, we're going to clip five uh, that I just sent you, Jalen, from uh, Roland Martin and Filter. We'll go into that here in just a second. So... Um, his sister, Journey Smollett, is asking for him to uh, be freed. Uh, this piece from uh, March 12th from Deadline.com. Journey Smollett calls for Cook County to hashtag free Jesse. Uh, following, brothers, uh, Jesse Sm following brother Jesse Smollett's Thursday sentencing. Okay, so you can check that out. Uh, actress Jesse Smollett has called for Cook County to free uh, hashtag free Jesse on the heels of her brother uh, Jesse Smollett's Thursday sentencing to 150 days. Uh, she posted on Instagram, Black Americans are incarcerated in state prisons at nearly five times the rate of white Americans. Jesse is innocent. Um, she's his younger sister. Yeah, she put I follow her on Instagram. So I saw the post before this article came out. She went on to say, and you don't have to believe in his innocence to believe he should be free. OK, right. Because, yeah, yeah that, that's true. Yeah, that's that's good that she added that in. there. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, he should not. He should not be in jail. That's a fourth level felony. Nobody was hurt. Not, it's not like he beat somebody up, anything like that. OK, so read read the rest of this here. Um, then, okay, so uh, let, let's go to this clip here. This is from, let me cue this up here. This is from Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday. Now, it, uh, Roland interviewed two of uh, Jesse Smollett's brothers, all right? Uh, you can watch that yourself at uh, Roland, uh, Roland Martin on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, that's from uh, March 11th, Friday, watch the Friday, March 11th show. 2022 you can watch that um we're, let's go to this clip rolling because Roland uh comes to me i'm on the panel and we discuss what's taking place let's go to this clip 
And that is the right thing to do. Now, if it turns out that it's untrue, um, you still acted in good faith. And I don't think people will um, penalize folks for trying to do the right thing. Uh, Michael, uh, the thing that's, uh, again, interesting, it was very interesting to see uh, that letter that Kim Fox dropped uh, right. uh, stating her position. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and frankly, she should. I mean, that was an assault on her office, their integrity, and what, what she was elected to do by the voters of Cook County and re-elected. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And once again, Roland, you know, we've seen an attack on pro progressive prosecutors across the country. I actually read the um, the letter that uh, Kim Fox wrote for that's in the Chicago Sun-Times. And we have seen um, attacks, whether it's in St. Louis, whether it's Marilyn Mosby in Baltimore, et cetera. But as Kim Fox lays out in this letter, um, Prosecutors have a lot of discretion that they can utilize, number one. Number two, there are hundreds of cases where you have uh, very low-level felonies that, you know, people pay a fine, they do community service. This was, you know, he, uh, Jesse had forfeited his $10,000 bond. He was going to do two days community service, and this was going to be over with. But it's, it seemed like the police department and maybe some higher-ups in Chicago didn't want to let this go. Uh, super, then Superintendent Eddie Johnson went on Good Morning America, and uh, he... Now, I think that was after Jesse Smollett went on Good Morning America. He, Jesse Smollett did go on Good Morning, Morning America as well. But you, you, if you sit back and say you don't live in Chicago, you sit back and you look at this, you say, wait a second, this is all over somebody who uh, allegedly set up a hoax on himself. It's not like he killed somebody, okay? Because and if you... I, I watched your broadcast live yesterday, Roland, with, um, with with the judge, Judge James Lynn, when he's giving his sentencing. And after he went on 25, 30 minutes, I was like, did I miss the sentencing? And then he kept going. And if you compare that to Judge Regina Chu in sentencing uh, Kim Potter, Judge Regina Chu had more sympathy for Kim Potter, who killed Dante Wright and did not provide any medical assistance for Dante Wright, and he dies, then Judge James Lynn had for um, uh, Jesse Smollett. So it seemed like it was personal. It seemed like there was a excessive. But also, Judge, ja Judge James Lynn is an elected official, and he can be voted out of office next time he's up for re-election. Um, it, is, it certainly has been uh, very interesting uh, looking at uh, the, the reaction here uh, and the responses. Uh, so uh, I have, um, you know, look, uh, we, will, we will see um, what is next, uh, of course, as you heard from uh, Justice's brothers, they are, um, uh, they, they talked to him. He is in jail. He will be in Cook County Jail uh, for the next five months. Uh, and so, um, uh, but I'm sure this would, would not be the last we heard what we hear of this case uh, as well. Okay. So that that's from Roland Martin Unfiltered on uh, Friday. Now, a couple of updates here, and I know we're coming up on a break. Uh, call the numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call-in number if you have a, a question or comment. Um so WGN uh, TV uh, has a, has an update, and uh, this came out uh, March 11th. It was uh, Friday. Uh, Jesse Smollett to spend uh, Jesse Smollett to spend uh, jail sentence in protective custody. Jesse Smollett to spend jail sentence in protective custody, and I'm going to pull this up here. This is from WGN TV uh, there in Chicago. And if we can go to this here, where is that? Okay. Um, Jesse Smollett's time in Cook County Jail will be spent in protective custody uh, away from uh, the jail's general population court records show, okay? And we're going to try to uh, pull this up here on the screen so you can see this. Uh, Cook County Judge James Lynn agreed with Smollett's attorney's recommendation 
that uh, the former Empire Act to be kept away from most of the other 6,000 inmates of the sprawling jail complex in Little Vid Village. Uh, it's known for um, it's known for being a rough jail. Okay, uh, it ain't federal prison. It's not federal jail. All right. So uh, let's go to this here. If we can close out these videos. All right, let's continue. So uh, the order granting protective custody was entered shortly after Judge James Lynn sentenced Jesse Smollett to um, 150 days uh, for lying to police about a phony, racist, and homophobic hate crime. Uh, he uh, they found him guilty. Uh, he orchestrated on himself in January 2019. So he... Uh, he's been ordered to pay the city 120,000 in restitution, um, also a $25,000 fine. Jesse Smollett's sentence is eligible for day for day credit. His sentence is eligible for day for day credit, meaning he could spend 75 days behind bars before he's released. He could spend, he, his sentence is eligible for day for day credit, meaning. Jesse Smollett could spend 75 days behind bars before he's released. Lawyers for Jesse vowed to appeal the ruling that has put the former empire actor uh, behind bars. Now, a jury found Smollett 39 guilty last December on five counts of disorderly conduct, a class four felony the lowest in illinois okay the lowest in the state of illinois which carried a maximum of three years in prison but he has no priors so he he shouldn't go to he shouldn't go to jail for being stupid i mean he shouldn't go to jail for this before announcing the sentence uh james lynn credited jesse smollett for his past charitable work, but said another side of the actor is quote unquote, is quote profoundly arrogant and selfish and narcissistic. End quote. It just went too far. That all that wasn't necessary. You know, all that wasn't necessary. Okay, so read the rest of this here. This is WGN Channel Nine in Chicago. Uh, Jesse Smollett uh, will be held in protective uh, custody. Okay, uh, I mentioned the um, the op-ed article that. Uh, Cook County Prosecutor Kim Fox uh, wrote for the Chicago Sun-Times. We're going to take a look at that when we come back from the break. Uh, we talked about it on Roland Martin and Filter. We're going to take a look at that because I read it. And she talks about the attack on progressive prosecutors, especially African-American progressive pros prosecutors, especially African-American female progressive prosecutors like she is. 313-778-7600 is the call-in number. Uh if you have a question or comment, we'll go to the phone lines when we come back from the break. Listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotep, our anniversary show, 12th year anniversary. 19 a.m. Superstation WFDF. We'll be back in a few minutes. Abundant Capital Group is a real estate investment company with over 20 years of experience in real estate. They specialize in two areas of real estate. One, they solve real estate problems with creative financing solutions that give the seller the most money for their property and two they show individuals how to get a higher rate of return on their investment capital with real estate note investing if you are looking to sell or need to sell your property here is what they provide market value offer even if you have little or no equity they typically pay all closing costs which can be thousands of dollars they close on a date of the seller's choosing and the seller does not have to be out of the house at the time of closing. They take the property in an as-is condition and the seller is not required to make any repairs. Give them a call or email them today for a free consultation and see how they can help you with your real estate needs. Call them at 973-475-8488. That's 973-475-8488. 
Visit their website, AbundantCapitalGroup.com, that's AbundantCapitalGroup.com, and email them at ACG at AbundantCapitalGroup.com. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Abundant Capital Group. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. All right. Uh, so right before the break, we were talking about uh, Jesse Smollett's sentencing. Uh, 30 months probation first, uh, 150 days. Uh, he is doing it at the Cook County Jail. Okay. And this is, I mean, this that's just ridiculous. Okay. There's no need for him to... Uh, Go to uh, go to jail over that. Okay, we're going to go to the phone lines here in just a second. I, I want to look at the um, article here from that uh, um, Kim Fox wrote. Okay, and this uh, piece from Kim Fox is for uh, the Chicago Sun Times. We talked about it on Roland Martin Unfiltered uh, when I was on Friday, and you heard me talk about it in the segment I just shared with you. Uh, Kim Fox and Jesse Smollett case. Our our justice system failed. Here's why. Our justice system failed. Here's why. Now remember, uh, when Kim Fox was handling this case, uh, it was agreed that Jesse Smollett would hold with um, it was agreed that Jesse Smollett would forfeit his ten thousand uh, dollar bond and do two days community service. And this was a done deal. OK, uh, this is from March 10th, 2022. And I'm just going to highlight a couple of things here. Then we'll go to the phone lines here um, on Thursday. The damaging, costly, and disingenuous criminal prosecution of Jesse Smollett came to an end. This is Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox writing this. this is, these are her words. As Cook County State's Attorney, it pains me to deep to uh, it pains me deeply to say that in this particular case, our justice system failed. In this particular case, our justice system failed. The Chicagoans deserve to know how and why it can and likely will happen again across the country. Uh, okay, so then she lays out January 2019, Mr. Smollett reported that he had been the victim of a hate crime, blah, blah, blah. Then, uh, uh, then uh, at the time, Superintendent Eddie Johnson uh, of the police, police superintendent Eddie Johnson flew to New York City for a live interview on Good Morning America. Now, Jesse Smollett did an interview of Good Morning America also. I think Jesse Smollett's interview was, I think it was after, I think Jesse Smollett's interview was before Eddie Johnson's. But anyway, they both did interviews on Good Morning America. Um, he flew to New York City, uh, Eddie Johnson, to, for a live interview on Good Morning America to discuss the evidence. And Jesse Smollett's assumed guilt prior to formal charges being filed. Given the reputational price Jesse Smollett paid, the damage to his reputation, given the reputational price Jesse Smollett paid, the $10,000 bond we held. And the fact that he had never been accused of a violent crime, my office made the decision not to pursue, not to further pursue a criminal conviction. This story should have ended there as thousands upon thousands of non-prosecuted cases do every day. And at the time she said, look, these cases like this get pleaded all the time and no jail time is 
is given, they may do community service, they may be put on probation, something like that. There's no jail time. Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox goes on to say, instead, taxpayers have since spent millions of dollars for the criminal prosecution of a hoax. Taxpayers have since spent millions of dollars for the criminal prosecution of a hoax. Last year, 2021, alone, there were over 800 murders in Chicago. My administration has vacated over 177 wrongful convictions. Her administration has vacated over 177 wrongful convictions, 87 of those wrongful convictions in the last three years. Rather than working collaboratively to stem the rising crime or free the wrongly convicted, a small group of people hijacked the judicial system to enact what is best described as mob justice. Now, I, I think I think on Thursday's show, I described it as a high-tech lynching. That's what it seemed like to me. It seemed like a non-violent high-tech lynching. That's what it seemed like to me. Um, let's go to the phone lines. Who, who we have on line one, Jalen? Well, no callers at this time. Oh, okay. The call back, 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Uh, so Kim Fox goes on to say no abuse of discretion standard. No abuse of discretion standard. And she, she talks about how prosecutors have a lot of discretion that they can exercise. But when they're black, all of a sudden, it's a problem unless they let cops get off like uh, Daniel Cameron in um, uh, Kentucky with the officers who were involved in Breonna Taylor being killed. And we know we know the day is the anniversary of Breonna Taylor being killed, uh, March 13th, 2020. So Kim Fox, Cook County State's attorney, elected by the people, a progressive prosecutor, she goes on to say, sadly, these tactics are becoming common. Black women elected prosecutors around the country have faced the same mob mentality black women elected prosecutors around the country have faced the same mob mentality in boston the district attorney rachel rollins chose not to prosecute 36 people arrested for peacefully protesting peacefully protesting a discriminatory charade called the straight pride parade OK, so they weren't like doing like the January 6th insurrectionists, a lot, a lot of those domestic terrorists, all of them weren't domestic terrorists. Some of them just walked in the building, walked around, looked around, walked out, didn't hurt anybody. Others were domestic terrorists. OK, well, these people, these 36 protesters, they didn't, they didn't do that. They were just protesting, peacefully protesting in an attempted end run around uh District Attorney Rachel Rollins, prosecutorial discretion, a crusading municipal court judge pursued charges anyway and was stopped only by the Massachusetts Supreme Court. So what we see here now in this case here with Jesse Smollett, this was a done deal with Cook County State's uh, attorney, uh, uh, Kim Fox. But then a special prosecutor was brought in to take a second look at the case. And then they brought charges against Jesse Smollett after it was a done deal by the black prosecutor. In St. Louis, opponents of circuit attorney Kim Gardner. We talked about Kim Gardner here on the show before. In St. Louis, opponents of circuit attorney Kim Gardner are working to revoke her law license as retribution for her decision to prosecute former Missouri Governor Eric Greitens, who was accused of taking new, nude photographs of a woman he had tied up. Charges against uh, former Missouri Governor Eric Greitens was eventually dropped. In Jesse Smollett's case, the mob was relentless. 
organized and effective. In Jesse Smollett's case, the mob was relentless, organized and effective. A judge appointed a special prosecutor with an unlimited budget to reopen the investigation into a nonviolent Hollywood actor, a nonviolent black gay Hollywood actor. A complete disregard for the discretion that prosecutors must have to be effective and independent. As a former prosecutor, Daniel Webb, who is the special prosecutor brought in, as a former prosecutor, Daniel Webb knows that prosecutors have that power and more importantly, knows there is no abuse of discretion. More importantly, she says that Daniel Webb, a former prosecutor, knows that there is no abuse of discretion standard here in, in this case. In fact, the Supreme Court has recognized the wide discretion of prosecutors and that courts should defer to the original prosecutorial decision. The U.S. Supreme Court has recognized the wide discretion of prosecutors like Kim Fox and that courts should defer to the original prosecutorial decision. Now, Special Prosecutor Daniel Webb knows this and could refer to his friend Bill Barr's own remarks. Bill Barr, uh, the, the, Donald Trump's second attorney general. Just because we don't like the outcome should not mean we bully prosecutors and circumvent the judicial process to get it changed. Jesse Smollett was indicted, tried, and convicted by a kangaroo prosecution in a matter of months. This is uh, Cook County State's attorney, Kimberly Fox, calling the prosecution of Jesse Smollett a kangaroo prosecution. Meanwhile, the families of more than 50 black women murdered in Chicago over the last 20 years await justice. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. You listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. This is our 12th year anniversary. This is the type of shows we've been having for 12 years. Um, you listen to 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, WFDF. I'm Michael M. Hotep. We'll be back in a few minutes. The Business Scaling Challenge is a seven-day online event that is taking place the week of March 13th through March 19th, 2022. This challenge will guide a group of business owners through scaling their businesses. Business owner Ronnie Sumler is hosting the Business Scaling Challenge in remembrance and honor of her father, the late civil rights activist Rodney Sumler. He helped a lot of African-American-owned businesses and local community leaders participate in politics. However, when he passed away, all of his ventures died with him. This inspired his daughter, Ronnie Sumler, to help community business owners preserve their businesses. Her business, Digital Dandelions, offers business Bibles to record business processes and procedures. Their business Bibles are their branded run of show business manuals that have everything you need to run your business in one place. Their business scaling kit is the first step in creating a business Bible. It includes everything needed to grow your business in one place. Join the Business Scaling Challenge Facebook group for more information and good luck in scaling your business. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. All right, I want to let you know about the new online class um, that uh, we have coming up Saturday, March 19th, 12 noon to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Saturday, March 26th. This is Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization. Um, this is a four hour online class. It's $25. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. We'll deal with over 100 different profiles on great African women, uh, all throughout history and African-American women all throughout history from antiquity to, uh, ancient deities like all set and Ma'at and neat to, um, African women who were queens to uh, those who were pioneers in various fields like in medicine, in science, in politics, 
uh, the arts, um, uh, uh, pol uh, and politics, all different aspects, okay, sports, etc. So uh, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can register for that. We just posted the link here on the thread of the broadcast. Great African women in history, the mothers of civilization. Uh, and this is a much expanded version of a lecture I first started doing in 2017. But uh, we're going to cover some uh, women that I haven't even covered before. Um, so you don't want to miss this. Saturday, March 19th. And Saturday, March 26, uh, 12 noon to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can register for it right now. We just posted the link. And we know um, March is Women's History Month, but we're going to do we're going to deal with some great African women in history. OK, let's go back uh, to this article. Now, who has not uh, who did not read this article, who did not know about this article that I, I shared with you from Cook County State's Attorney Kimberly Fox? that uh, is published in the Chicago Sun-Times, okay? Who did not know about this? That's why it's important to support this show, okay? Because this is the type of information, all that he said, she said, who slept with who, Pebble stole cookie, what she thought she heard, all that stuff. We don't have time for that. We deal with real substance here, okay? Okay, so Cook County State's Attorney Kimberly Fox called the prosecution of Jesse Smollett a, kang a kangaroo prosecution. She said, meanwhile, uh, the families of more than uh, the families of more than 50 black women murdered in Chicago over the last 20 years await justice. The families of more than 50 black women murdered in Chicago over the last 20 years await justice. Along with the way the same special prosecutor pursued a targeted, predetermined investigation of my involvement with the case, knowing I had done nothing wrong, but that objecting to the process would be painted as guilt. Objecting to the process would be painted as guilt. I cooperated. Predictably, the probe found no criminal wrongdoing and still unironically, I don't even know if that's a word, but anyway, still unironically accused me of abuses of discretion. So she's saying the probe that they did into her handling of the Jesse Smollett case found no criminal wrongdoing, but they still accused her of abuses of discretion. It's a playbook attack and marginalize anyone fighting to create a more just system. One that recognizes the rule of law. What is most frustrating is that my cooperation in a process I knew was illegitimate sets a precedent that can be weaponized against progressive prosecutors determined to break the cycle of inevitable outcomes. Further, I worry it will serve as a deterrent to the next generation of prosecutors eager to fight for critical reforms. Anyone interested in an equitable system of justice should be worried too. So this is Cook County State's Attorney, Kimberly Fox. Uh, this is published in the Chicago Sun-Times, Kim Fox. In Jesse Smollett case, our justice system failed. Here's how and why. The tactics uh, used are becoming common when cases involve progressive prosecutors. I worry it will serve as a deterrent to the next generation of prosecutors eager to fight for critical reforms. Okay, so check this out also. All right, now. Uh, 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Okay. Um, lastly here, there, there, there was a, um, article from meaww.com on Judge James Lane because I was trying to find some information on him. And I heard, I, I watched, uh, Yogita Wode's show, on uh, the Black News Channel, I know you did. I've um, 
uh, interviewed her before when I used to guest host um, Roland Martin's nationally syndicated radio show. She has um, making the case on uh, the Black News Channel, and I saw her panel that she had on dealing with the sentencing of Jesse Smollett. There was this. Um, so I, I heard some things about Judge James Land, and he is elected by the people. So when he's up for re-election, vote him out of office. I, I came across this piece here. This deals with who is uh, James Lynn. Who is James Lynn? Judge says Jesse Smollett faked attack to make himself to make himself famous okay so there's a key part i want to go to this is from march 11th 2020 uh march 11 2022 if we go to this was page three um no i want to go to page page five who was the judge in jesse smollett sentencing okay right here Judge James Land was the judge who gave his final ruling in Jesse Smollett's case in, in trial, in Jesse Smollett's trial. Once a re, once reportedly a veteran, the Cook County judge had conducted more bench trials for sex cases than any judge in Cook County. He conducted more bench trials for sex cases than any other judge in Cook County. However, in 2011, Judge James Lynn attracted a lot of controversy, attracted a lot of controversy after reversing a jury's verdict in the sexual assault case of three sisters by a man named Joseph Fultz, F-U-L-T-Z, and convincing him of a far less serious crime. And, convict, and convincing him of a far less serious crime. According to a report by Injustice Watch, uh, Fultz, and that was Joseph Fultz, uh, Joseph Fultz was given only 18 years in jail, a far cry from the mandatory life sentence he faced if the jury's decision had stood. The report noted, quote, for the Cook County State's Attorney Office, the about face marked a final straw following a series of what prosecutors viewed as unfavorable decisions by Judge James Lynn on sex cases, according to internal office emails and interviews with several former prosecutors, end quote. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this case when Jesse Smollett's attorneys appeal. The, the article goes on to say, and as a result, in less than two years following his controversial handling of Joseph Fultz's case, Judge James Lynn was bounced from at least 25 sex cases using SOJ, SOJs um, about uh, uh, using SOJs about four times more than the next closest judge, according to an unprecedented analysis of criminal court data. So there's something strange going on here. Up, it appears allegedly with Judge James Lynn. It's something like really strange. It has been said that Judge James Lynn has not overseen a sex case since November 2013. Also recently, one of the victims of the 2011 case said of the judge that he didn't really said of the judge. And let me increase the size of this here. Just a second here. OK. It has been said that Judge James Land has not overseen a sex case since November 2013. Also recently, one of the victims of the 2011 case said the uh, said of the judge that 
he didn't really think about the emotional damages that Joseph Fultz left on me or my sisters or the full nature of how sick he was, end quote. She went on to say, quote, and it's not because of the case. It's because most of the time people don't care about people that look like me or that have my kind of background. That's why so many people take the law into their own hands, end quote. So read the rest of this here. This is at uh, Emmy. This is uh, name of this article here. Who is James Lynn? Judge says Jesse Smollett faked attack to make himself famous. This is at M-E-A-W-W dot com. Listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. When we come back, we'll talk about um, the impact of the Ukraine-Russia conflict on African countries. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. What does self-care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature. A chance to create something remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, our handcrafted skin care and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. See for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. This is our anniversary uh, show, 12th year anniversary. Uh, started broadcasting the African History Network show on March 10th, 2022. So, uh, we celebrate our anniversary uh, this weekend and this week. Um, started out on, on the Harambe Radio Network, and then shortly after that went to Blog Talk Radio and uh, still have the Blog Talk Radio account. We still upload the audio podcast of our shows to Blog Talk Radio. So when you go to our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, and we have the information towards the top of the page uh, about the radio show and uh, me broadcasting here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF. Uh, you can click on the link that says listen to podcast. It takes you to our blog talk radio show, blogtalkradio.com forward slash the African History Network show. We have over a thousand audio podcasts of my shows going back to 2010. Uh, we're also on the iHeartRadio um, app. Download the iHeartRadio app to your smartphone. Search for the African History Network show. And we have about there about 300 of my audio podcasts there. Uh, also, you can listen to 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF. Uh, through the iHeart Radio app, if you're outside of uh, you know uh, Michigan, outside of Detroit, and uh, then I started on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF in um, January of 2016 uh, on Steve Hood's show, the morning show. We know Steve passed away last year; cancer is a friend of mine. And then I started my show, the African History Network show, on 9, 10 a.m. in April of 2016 so uh april 2022 would be six years for me doing a show here be six years me doing a show here on this station but uh 12 years in total so thanks for the support over the years uh everybody this ain't easy but, and uh, i never really planned to be on radio i was just trying to uh, share information with people uh i didn't know i'd be on this uh, for 12 years, if I knew it'd be this hard, if I knew this work would be this hard, I don't know if I would have done it. But anyway, <laughs> let's go to the phone lines. Let's go to Rich uh, on line one. Hey, Rich, welcome to the African History Network show. Thanks for holding. Tell us where you're calling from. Michael, Rich had no patience. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> we have a lot of callers that call in. So, you know, you call back tomorrow night, Rich. Okay. So I want to go to this next clip here. Um, this uh, Charles Blow, uh, some of the stuff he has is nonsense on Black News Channel, but he does have some good content every now and then. Uh, <laughs> so there was a segment that he did dealing with um, the impact that the uh, Ukraine Russia crisis is having on African countries. Let's let's go to that clip, Jalen. 
Oh, you know what? Um, I, I, I should have told you. Uh, cue it up. Start, start at about the two minute mark. Just start up at about the two minute mark. We'll, we'll come to that in just a second. Also, uh, people take a look at this. Uh, there's an article that I want you to look at. We'll probably talk about this some um, on uh, Monday show. Now, Monday through Friday, we're on 11 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time. We rebroadcast these shows throughout the day on our social media platforms. Also, the African History Network on Facebook and uh, Michael M. Hotep on YouTube. Uh, th th there was a, uh, a good article from uh, the BBC that deals with um, viewpoint of Ukraine, why African wars get different treatment. Okay, let, let's go to that clip, uh, Jalen. The governments in, like, in Libya and Central African Republic against insurgencies. Also, Russian forces have aided in human rights abuses in the region, the UN said, though Russia denies all of this. As Putin becomes increasingly isolated, experts say he may try to bolster Russia's relationship with the countries in Africa. Kenya, however, was one of the African countries that voted to condemn Russia's invasion. The ambassador to Kenya drew on the history of colonialism to condemn the action. Joining me now to discuss Imani Shears, associate professor at George Washington University, and joining me by phone is Clarence Hussein, professor of political science at Howard University. Uh, Professor Chiaz, I want to start with you. I mean, I think it, it may come as a surprise to people that it's not very clear. It's much more complicated. There's an entanglement between Russia, uh, and to some degree, also Ukraine, and many countries on the continent of Africa. Can you expound on what we just discussed in the intro about why those entanglements exist and to what degree they kind of hamper uh, African countries from, well, at least about half of them, from coming on board with condemning this action by Russia? Um, yes, sir, um, Mr. Blow. Thank you so much for having me on this evening. Um, it is critical, uh, the relationship um, between Russia and African um, nations in particular is long and in-depth. And what we're seeing right now is the relationship between imperialism and colonialism. So you have African nations that are really looking at the situation in Ukraine and deciding, is this a fight we want to get into? How are we looking at the relationship between our best interests and this global, truly global conflict? And we're seeing that Reality is most African nations are really trying to bide their time. They're looking at the fact that with their own countries and with their own um, struggles and crises and conflicts, whether it be with inflation, whether it be with famine. In the intro, you talked about um, the, the Horn of Africa and the conflicts that are um, currently exacerbated there. You talked about Kenya. We look at countries like Nigeria, South Africa, even the Democratic Republic of Congo. And it's really a strategic move. How do these governments position themselves to make truly what can be a power play? There is clearly a humanitarian crisis occurring at the moment, but we're also talking about nations that have had humanitarian crisis, years of war and strife, and the global community have not come to their aid. So it is it's truly a moment in time and a moment in history where we're seeing that these conflicts and this particular conflict with Russia and Ukraine and how it's playing on the continent, and it has to be a strategic power play. All right. Uh, hey, hey, say, hey, hey, pause, know, pause it right there, uh, Jalen, because we're running out of time. We'll, we'll talk about this more on uh, Monday's show, okay? And um, – that was from uh, the March 9th uh, edition of Charles Blow's show on uh, the Black News Channel. That was um, uh, Professor Imani Cheers um, from George Washington University, Associate Professor Imani Cheers. Okay, and check out this uh, article also from uh, the BBC, bbc.com that deals with this. We'll talk about this some more Monday and throughout the week. And in the article, it deals with how millions forced to flee in Ethiopia the last 16 months uh, have been held uh, in the north of the country as a result of a conflict in Tigray. Um, more than 2 million people have been forced from their homes. In addition, hundreds of thousands face starvation and the government has been accused of blocking deliveries of aid and essential medicine, something it denies. Uh, then it, it goes on and talks about uh, what else? It talks about Tunisia, 
Um, it talks about Cameroon and it talks about these different conflicts and displacement of people in different African nations, coups that have taken place. There's been about six coups in the past 18 months. This gets very little attention from mainstream media. They may do one story on it, but when I watch MSNBC, they had like Ukraine is the only story taking place right now. They have they have around the clock coverage on Ukraine. Yes, it can lead to World War Three. Yes, it's important. But when we have conflicts in African nations, we see a very different approach from, quote unquote, mainstream media, which is why African-American owned and, and African-American targeted media is so important. All right. If, uh, be sure to. Uh, Visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Also, you can support the African History Network. Uh, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. And through PayPal, PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. You can register for my online classes. And a new one, Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization. You can register at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Right now, it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. OK, look, um, you can register for the classes. So we have three courses now that you can register for. Um, Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement of Black Power, 1865 to 1968. And um, the new one, uh, Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization. Uh, and Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization is only twenty five dollars. OK. So as soon as you register, there's bonus content that you can watch. And that starts um, Saturday, um, the night, uh, Saturday, March 19th. Um, and that's going to be uh, two consecutive Saturdays. OK. And we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch them anytime. So even a year from now, you can go back and watch the entire course. OK, for any of these classes you register for. A year from now, you can go back and watch the entire course. All right. So I'm going to post the uh, uh, information. This is uh, the link here for um, Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization. We have some bonus content there. As soon as you register, you can start watching the bonus content. All right. We have to get out of here right now. It's correct for wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. The Business Scaling Challenge is a seven-day online event that is taking place the week of March 13th through March 19th, 2022. This challenge will guide a group of business owners through scaling their businesses. Business owner Ronnie Sumler is hosting the Business Scaling Challenge in remembrance and honor of her father, the late civil rights activist Rodney Sumler. He helped a lot of African-American-owned businesses and local community leaders participate in politics. However, when he passed away, all of his ventures died with him. This inspired his daughter, Ronnie Sumler, to help community business owners preserve their businesses. Her business, Digital Dandelions, offers business Bibles to record business processes and procedures. Their business Bibles are their branded run of show business manuals that have everything you need to run your business in one place. Their business scaling kit is the first step in creating a business Bible. It includes everything needed to grow your business in one place. Join the Business Scaling Challenge Facebook group for more information and good luck in scaling your business. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry, it's larger than the art world, and I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre, I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? 
I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. What does self-care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature. A chance to create something remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, our handcrafted skin care and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. See for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. Abundant Capital Group is a real estate investment company with over 20 years of experience in real estate. They specialize in two areas of real estate. One, they solve real estate problems with creative financing solutions that give the seller the most money for their property. And two, they show individuals how to get a higher rate of return on their investment capital with real estate note investing. If you are looking to sell or need to sell your property, here is what they provide. Market value offer, even if you have little or no equity, they typically pay all closing costs, which can be thousands of dollars. They close on a date of the seller's choosing and the seller does not have to be out of the house at the time of closing. They take the property in an as is condition and the seller is not required to make any repairs. Give them a call or email them today for a free consultation and see how they can help you with your real estate needs. Call them at 973-475-8488. That's 973-475-8488. Visit their website, AbundantCapitalGroup.com. That's AbundantCapitalGroup.com. And email them at ACG at AbundantCapitalGroup.com. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Abundant Capital Group.